Just as part of a little shop update, you notice that I've got plastic draped over the toolbox. This is because I was spraying the frame of that haul truck and I didn't want to get overspray on the toolbox. So I went out this morning and got some painter's plastic. Um, went out and, and got picked up that the plastic and some other things, a couple of masks and um, tack rags. Um, but then what I wanted to do, and I wanted one of these for a while, is I went to Tractor Supply and picked up this fan. Now, this is the only fan that they had left and they had it out on the floor. And it was uh, reduced from three something. I, I wanna say 312. It had been reduced to uh, 269. And then there was a tag on it that said 10% off. So um, I asked the guy, he says, do you have any more of them in stock? And he says, no, I don't have any of them in stock. But um, uh, I says, well, can I have the floor model? And he says, yeah. And I says, well, you're going to give me something extra off of it. So what I ended up doing is he ended up taking it up the register for me and told the uh, checkout guy that uh, to give it to me for 225 So... I got this fan for $225. Um, what I do with it is I put it in the overhead door um, blowing out when I'm painting in here so that it tries to... Um, I'll come out here because I know that it, the light from the outside is blowing you out. Um, I put it right here in the overhead door and uh, blowing out this way so that it sucks... Um, the overspray and the fumes back out of the shop and blows them outside <clears throat> But I'll also use it when it gets really hot and gets into them um, No wind days it, Really we haven't had any really bad hot weather this year um, Around Buffalo. I mean like today. It's overcast. It feels like it's gonna rain. It's probably in the mid 70s mid upper 70s and um got a nice breeze it's humid but um got a nice breeze what i'm gonna do is uh, one of the things and i didn't videotape it and i it's still not here because he came and picked it up um my landlord does a well he was in the plumbing business before he sold it um and just does property management now, owns property, and and uh, he is a hands-on guy. He does all his own work. So he had a plug out of a drain pipe, um, and it was a bigger plug, it's either six or eight inch. And I'm, again, I'm sorry that I don't have it, but what I'm going to do is I'll throw a picture up in here. Um, what it was is a screw plug that went into a T, like a TY, and you could uh, use it for a cleanup to snake out the, the line or whatever you wanted to do. Um, and it had a square notched um, uh, I don't know what to call it, a square notched uh, recessed a port that you used to unscrew it out of the thing and he didn't have anything to fit it he had uh, adapter wrenches let's call them to fit small, uh, smaller size plugs plastic plugs but he didn't have one for this a six or eight inch plug and again i'll throw a picture of it up in here i just made this wrench out of uh angle iron and I had a piece of hex stock laying around 7 8 hex stock and I put that on the top so that he could use it for a wrench um, but anyways so I've got that going on I've also this is on a Wednesday um, next week I am going to be making a haul to Maine uh, Portland Maine um, a forklift truck I've got to take up to Portland Maine but um I'll bring you back for other things. It's part of the shop update. <clears throat> this is over by the haul truck and 
if you walked into the front of my shop, this would be the left-hand side, and it's a bay because there's a column right there. So the column is that you're looking at it now to the right-hand side, but now it will be the left-hand side of the column. There's only two light fixtures in this entire bay. One over here, eight-foot fixture, and I don't know whether you can see at the end of that, above the end of that rack, the far end of that rack, there's a eight foot light fixture or well, that might be four foot bulbs in that doubled up but it's always dark over in this spot now i i do have lights on the bench which helps when you're working on the bench but it's always dark over in this area especially i i know that i don't have it on but it, even with it on it's dark um Especially in the wintertime when you have the overhead door closed and there's no ambient light from outside coming in here It's always dark. So I had told the landlord I wanted to get a couple of LED lights and just stick over here and uh, He says well, I've I've got a couple uh, Or at least one if you want to take it and use it. So here's two um, eight foot LED bulbs in somewhere around here there's the ends for them the uh, part that goes into the fixture and then over here um, is a fixture he had a fixture laying around and he had already taken the ballast out of it now with these LED with those tube type LED lights um, if you convert an old fluorescent fixture you have to take the ballast out and just wire it for 110 um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewire this fixture put those bulbs in there and um, put that light up over in that corner now for the time being I'm going to wire it up in conjunction with that light until I see what this thing puts out. The bulbs really don't tell you how many lumas they put out. So I'm not really sure of how good this picture is going to be, but I'll bring you back when I do it. What I did is I rewired this light fixture. Now I only rewired it temporarily as far as a cord goes. Uh, so that I can just plug it into an extension cord. So there it is. Now, it really looks bright on the ground, but we'll see what it uh, does up in the air. You know what I might do is I, I might put these two fixtures, like I had said before in a previous video, I leave the two fixtures together. Uh, I mean, I'll separate them by a little bit, but basically keep them kind of together or both of them wired up at the same so that uh, I get more light. I'm out here behind the shop. Um, it's a Sunday. What I did is I just pulled this trailer around here using the forklift truck and that uh, uh, trailer adapter that I built for the forklift truck. Um, I pulled it around here because I have a haul. I've got to go pick a forklift up from a uh, dealer on uh, Monday, Monday morning. And then I've got to have it in Portland, Maine at uh, 8 o'clock Tuesday morning. So I just brought the trailer around the back. Going to grease the axles, check the tire pressure. Um, somebody had borrowed a chain binder. I've got to get, that, uh, get them sorted out and put all back in order. And uh, get ready to make that haul on... Um, We'll pick it up tomorrow and then make the haul. I'm, I'm probably going to leave um, early Tuesday morning. It's about eight hours up there, so I'll probably leave uh, late Monday, early Tuesday, uh, so that I can be in Portland at eight. 
but anyways here's the trailer behind the shop and again just gonna grease it up check the tire pressures make sure all the lights are working which I know that they are because I just had the trailer inspected too so um, I'll bring you back when I for other things one of the things that I had to do while I was out here washing the trailer down and getting it ready uh, greasing it uh, checking the tires um, when I went to get it inspected on Thursday the tail uh, license plate light was out and he called me out on it um, he didn't I still got it inspected but he told me one to change to, and I happened to have one in the uh, I got a kit from PJ trailers so that I uh, the kit contains and it was fairly cheap 35 bucks but the kit contains every light that's on this trailer every original light that is that's on the trailer and included in it was the license plate light so I just changed that out um, but anyways I just wanted to show that to you and I've got the truck in the shop um, the truck is fairly clean but I want to clean the inside out um, Emma was in there and uh, opening toy packages that she got at five below but uh, I need to clean the inside out and I'll probably wash it again before I leave tomorrow. I'm going to do a little test shoot here. This has got the door closed. The light is off. The regular lights are on, but the light up above is off. Let me go turn that regular or that light on. Okay, so that's it with the regular fluorescent fixture bulb. Let me see if I can uh, do a test shoot now with uh, after I get the LED installed. Okay, here we go again. What I'm going to do is I've got that fixture hung up there, the LED fixture hung up there, and I'll show it to you afterwards. But I'm going to go over, I'm going to turn the regular lights on, and now I, I've got that LED uh, wired into a plug temporarily. After I turn the regular lights on, I'll walk back over here and plug the plug in and show you the light difference with the LED. Okay, there we are with the regular fluorescent fixture on. And there we are with the LED. It does make a difference. Um, so I'm going to leave that up there. I do have, uh, I'll show it to you with the other camera. Uh, I'm going to turn this one off and I'll bring you back with the other camera and show you the fixtures up above. Okay, so there is a fixture that I hung. Um, now I hung it parallel with the beam. Um, not the Z purlins, but parallel with the beam. Whereas the old fixtures were hung parallel with the Z purlins. What I'm going to do is take that old fixture and put it over towards the center and hang it the way that I've got it hung um, over here. So it'll probably start on the, on the Z, Z purlin that it's on right now and run lengthwise along this way over to this Z purlin and I'll hang it probably down farther 
um, so that it's at probably the same level as the that exists or that uh, LED fixture that I hung. But it did provide that LED fixture did provide a, a lot more light than was over here to begin with. Not saying it's going to provide the light that that LED fixture that I put over the bandsaw provides, but it it did. Um, it did brighten this area up back here because it was awfully dark back here uh, especially like i said in the winter time it was really dark so that's it for this shop update um bring it back again